Good morning. Thank you everyone for joining us today at the Jackson Laboratory for Genomic Medicine for a very special announcement. I'm Dr. Charles Lee, director of this institute, and I'm pleased to welcome Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont, Dr. Andrew Agonobi, CEO and Executive Vice President for Health Affairs at UConn Health, Dr. Bruce Leung, Dean of the Medical School at UConn Health, and Dr. A.J. Kumar, Executive Vice President and Chief Clinical Officer of Hartford HealthCare. Before we get underway, I want to take a moment to highlight the fact that this is largely a virtual press conference. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we want to practice social distancing that can keep and help protect public health. All of the media representatives that are joining us uh, are joining us via WebEx video conferencing technology, and our speakers are here with me in an essentially empty auditorium. For members of the press, we will keep your microphones muted until we open the floor for questions after the governor completes his comments. I'd also like to remind you that if you have any technical problems with the video feed, you can also call in on the dial-in number provided to you in the meeting invitation. COVID-19 is, in fact, why we're holding this uh, press conference today, to announce that beginning next week, our clinical diagnostic laboratory here in Farmington, Connecticut, at the Jackson Laboratory for Genomic Medicine, will begin COVID-19 testing. The Jackson Laboratory is honored to be a part of the state of Connecticut's coordinated response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We view the ability to increase COVID-19 diagnostic testing capabilities as a fundamental responsibility and part of our humanitarian mission to improve human health. In this building, we have a state accredited clinical diagnostic laboratory, which we have mobilized to provide COVID-19 diagnostic testing, desperately needed both in the state of Connecticut and in fact throughout the country. This will increase the testing capability available here and is vitally important to diagnose affected patients as quickly as possible, which is essential in controlling the pandemic in our communities. We'll be working closely with the state and our healthcare partners to ramp up the speed and the volume of testing while adhering to the highest standards of safety and testing accuracy. Our role will be to conduct the actual genetic testing of the samples obtained through our clinical partner organizations, uh, including Yukon Health and Hartford HealthCare. Please note that we are not a collection site, so please do not come to the Jackson Laboratory to request the testing, but rather contact your doctor's office or local hospital for guidance on where to go for sample collections. As a nonprofit biomedical research institute, the Jackson Laboratory has been a leader in research to improve human health for more than 90 years. In addition to the COVID-19 testing that we're doing here, at our Bar Harbor main location, we are already producing special mouse models that can be used for COVID-19 vaccine testing and research. I want to personally thank Governor Lamont for including the Jackson Laboratory in the state's response to this urgent public health situation. We are proud to be here in Connecticut and honored to do our part in this battle against COVID-19. I will now turn it over to our clinical partner organizations, uh, first Yukon Health and then Hartford HealthCare to discuss what this additional testing capability will mean for helping their patients. Thank you so much. My name is Dr. Andy Agwinobi. I'm the CEO of Yukon Health, and um, I'm joined here by Bruce, Dr. Bruce Liang, who's the Dean of the School of Medicine. Um, I'd first of all like to say, as a university medical system, we are very, very proud to be partnered with Jackson Laboratory uh, in, in Connecticut on our campus here at uh, Yukon Health in Farmington. And I want to say that we're thrilled that Jackson Laboratories is uh, is, is going forward with uh, starting testing for COVID-19 patients. Um, it's, it's critical in, in the state of Connecticut that we bring on uh, as, as many sources of testing as possible. And I think it's just amazing that in Connecticut, 
we have an organization like Jackson Laboratories that is, is, is able to do this work. Uh, because it's not just going to be testing today, it's about research tomorrow uh, on COVID-19 and other similar challenges that we have. So I think in partnership with this wonderful research organization, uh, I want to say that, I want to say thank you to the leadership of uh, Jackson Laboratories for, its, um, uh, for, for being such an asset in, in Connecticut's fight against uh, this pandemic. So with that, I'll just uh, have uh, the Dean of the School of Medicine say a few words as well. Thank you, Dr. Agronobi. Uh, I'm Bruce Lian. I'm the Dean of the School of Medicine. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership, and uh, thanks, Dr. Charles Lee. Uh, we are uh, pleased and excited to be part of this new initiative, the availability of COVID-19 testing at Jack's GM represents a much needed source of testing for our patients and healthcare workers. We appreciate the opportunity to collaborate uh, with our longstanding partner, Jax, uh, in this new initiative to fight COVID-19 pandemic. Knowing who has the virus, particularly those who are vulnerable, will be decisive on the level of monitoring and care. Equally important uh, is the need for further prevention of exposure to others. At UConn Health, as Dr. Agronobi uh, indicated, we've been at the forefront of uh, treating suspected or known COVID-19 patients. We have implemented all the safety measures and are making preparation for any surge. Knowing which of our patients have the case via a reliable test with a quick turnaround time, such as what's being implemented here, would be life-saving. Once again, we are eager to collaborate with JAX and with other hospitals, such as Hoffer Healthcare, to bring the best possible care to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Charles Lee. My name is Ajay Kumar. I'm the Chief Clinical Officer and Executive Vice President for Harper Healthcare. So I want to begin by thanking uh, Governor. Um, he has been relentless in his, this fight and has been uh, really putting all of us together. This collaboration now with Jackson Lab is uh, initiation of Governor Lamont, so I really want to thank him for his effort. Uh, we're so proud to be partner, uh, partnering with Jackson Lab right now. This is such an asset we have in our community, and we're going to be benefiting with that. Now, at Heart for Healthcare, as you know, we've been working on several weeks and improving our uh, rep response to the COVID-19 exposure. And we've done wonderful things and a lot of different things so far. Um, our CEO, Jeffrey Flax, has really created a system when our teams are divided into thinkers and doers and innovative approach. Uh, we have actually become now um, advisor to some of the members across this, the country, um, Greater New York Hospital Association, and us, we are working very closely at this time uh, with uh, Mr. Flax to improve the response in the COVID-19. But we identified earlier on in this fight that the bottleneck is going to come by lack of testing. Uh, and this um, um, had um, really created some um, challenges for us as to be able to provide the delivery and other mechanism. Now with this partnership with Jackson Lab, I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled to know that we are going to be able to do um, testing here in the center. And this is going to open another venue and challenge, uh, channel for us. We're going to continue to be on the cutting edge. This is a disease which is going to test us in multiple times in multiple ways. Uh, but with this kind of collaboration, this kind of partnership, this kind of forward thinking by our state leaders is going to position us differently as we go forward. So with that, I, I want to thank everybody who's here and who's listening at this time. Uh, we're in this together, and we're going to come through this. Thank you. Well, we are in this together. We are going to get through this together. And I have been relentless, uh, Dr. Kumar, uh, but I've been relentless uh, working with an amazing team here in the state. Uh, this afternoon, I'll be meeting with all, by phone, by telephone, we know what we're doing in this day and age, with social distancing, all the small business leaders, and giving them some confidence as we power through and help them uh, uh, manage uh, what has been a cutoff in a lot of their business. We're working every day with our mayors, our amazing mayors and first selectmen, making sure that what's going on in the federal government gets interpreted to the state government, gets taken to the uh, mayors and first selectmen, and there are departments of public health and economic development. We're working uh, 
every day with our superintendents of schools and working uh, with um, amazing online academic providers to make sure that our kids who have been out of school now a week, at least we're beginning to provide online support, making sure that um, uh, they can continue to learn and making sure that they can continue to um, uh, stay apart from all their friends by uh, what we're providing for them at home. Just like many parents are at home with telecommuting as we work with our um, ISP partners, trying to increase capacity to make sure that a telecommuting actually works. I've been so proud working with the legislators on both sides of the aisle. We are united as a team. And uh, we're going to be able to um, uh, give you a better idea of what our emergency package looks like um, uh, later this week and first thing early next week get that voted on to give you some confidence. Look. We're working with the feds. I'm from the show me state now. I want to see what the uh, federal government's going to do. I, uh, they are paying attention. We are all working in one direction, but I've got to make sure that we are the bridge until uh, the federal support comes through. So as I said, look, this is a team effort, and I think we're working together a team. And uh, our health care system, the hospitals, biosciences, you're the quarterback of this team. We're not going to get anything right going forward until we can mitigate the effects of COVID-19. You know, the partnership we've got with uh, UConn Health and Hartford Health and Jackson Lab is the type of partnership that's going to get us uh, through this. I know what this means in terms of working, in terms of increasing our ability to test dramatically. It's up, uh, you know, 10 times in the last week, and I hope it's going to be up 10 times again over the next uh, week or two, just so we can do a better job of finding out who is a carrier, making sure they're isolated, making sure that nurses and daycare and the such, we can prioritize those people so everybody knows they're safe as uh, they go forward. And I also, I've been inundated with ideas um, from our amazing life sciences and bioscience uh, community, which is here in Connecticut, here is part of the greater uh, you know, New England community. As you know, I'm working very closely with our uh, regional governors. So what we do, we do together in collaboration. And um, I think I've got some folks who know a lot more about this than I do. I was recently um, at Protein Sciences, in Meriden, Connecticut company. They worked hard on the uh, original SARS vaccine, working hard on flu vaccines, working hard on a vaccine that may, at some point in the future, not tomorrow, not next month, but make sure that if there's a second or third wave of this, we're better prepared than we were for the uh, first wave. Uh, and secondly, I'd like you to comment on what the prospects are there, if I could, uh, Dr. Lee, Dr. Kumar, I suppose. And secondly, what are the other therapies that are out there? Uh, I know what we're trying to develop new, but I'm getting a lot of information in terms of existing drugs, existing medicines, maybe oriented towards malaria or other diseases that might have some relevance to a tamping down COVID-19. Is this something that's years away, months away, gives people some hope? Should I answer that? Yeah. I, I will start. Um, thank you. Uh, we, we are here in a, in, a, in a wonderful place of talent here, so I want to um, um, talk about a few things about the therapies and the effectiveness of those things and where the latest science is evolving at this time. Now, currently, um, the, uh, what, what we have in our, um, in, in, our, in our facilities to support the, physician, the patient's needs are generally the drugs we've used before for malarial drugs like chloroquine, as Governor mentioned earlier on. Uh, but the, the science is evolving and rapidly changing. Even last week, we heard there was a trial conducted in China which uh, led to a significant reduction in the viral uh, um, uh, presence in the, in, the, uh, in the patient's body. Only after five days of therapy, the drug called Fevipavir, uh, which is being developed at this time, early uh, trials at this time. We are also um, in, in connect, uh, working with some of the other partners, and I have a connection with uh, some of the companies uh, out in Canada who's looking into uh, research, uh, looking into the immunoglobulin-related um, uh, use and vaccine creation at the moment. And there are some other things on the horizon. But this is going to take some time. It is going to take some trials and some learnings over the time. And I think by uh, late fall, uh, early fall, we would have some direction where we're heading into that part. Now, we, 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 I want to go back to the, the basic things we've been talking about. The recent measures the governor has implemented, and I really give a lot of kudos to some of the um, brave decisions we have made as a, as a system here, is social distancing. 
uh, creating a really um, um, a, a focus on and awareness on that part is going to position us differently. And I'm, I truly believe that in Connecticut, if we continue to follow social distancing, continue to follow the, 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 the hand hygiene and some of the basic protocol, this is going to position us very differently over the time. So since I have the mic, I'd like to again plead to the public that th these are the things which is going to help us, allow us to give some more time to be able to care for you, allow the supplies and other things to be available, and we're going to be able to manage our, our, uh, um, our, our population in a much better way as we go forward. Charles, you have something to add? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. So um, I, I have been uh, watching very closely the, the developments in new vaccines, new treatments. Uh, some of these treatments uh, are, are, uh, are repurposed uh, drugs that have been used for the flu uh, and are being looked at specifically for COVID-19. Uh, I'm very impressed by what's been happening at Protein Sciences with Sanofi. Uh, and so what I've been impressed about is the fact that the scientific community has come together very rapidly uh, in a unified manner to combat uh, COVID-19 uh, in terms of the vaccine and treatments. Uh, and that's actually one of the reasons why uh, uh, even for uh, uh, the Jackson Laboratory, we actually have a specialized mouse uh, that has the ACE2 inhibitor allowing these mice to be infected by COVID-19. Uh, and uh, we, are, we have already begun for several weeks ago uh, the ramp up of production of these mice to be distributed to people that need to use those mice to initially test for new vaccines. Um, uh, all over the world. And so it, uh, for me, it's just amazing to see the scientific community come together so rapidly around this disease. I, I'm very hopeful we'll have something soon.